Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, Intel released the new Core Ultra Series 2 chips, and I really wanted to put this up against the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So, big reason here is because we are going to see handhelds powered by a very similar chip. The one I have here is the Core Ultra 7 258V, and it's inside of the new Asus ZenBook S14. It actually puts down some really good performance, and with this new Series 2 Core Ultra chip, we've got a brand new iGPU with XE2 cores, and they do promise a big uplift when you compare it to the first generation Core Ultras. So I figured we could put these two chips up against each other because, again, like I mentioned, we're going to see handhelds like the MSI Claw AI-8. And we're not sure if it's going to be using the exact same chip we're testing here, but it will be pretty close. I've got a lot to test in this video, and before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCV Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. I've been doing a lot of testing with the ZenBook S14. I actually just posted a video. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description. One thing I really wanted to do here was go watt for watt when it comes to performance. So we're actually going to be testing at two different wattages, 17 watt, which is performance mode on the ROG Ally X, and 25 watt, which is the turbo mode on the X. And in order to get there, I'm going to be using manual mode on the X here. It's really easy to adjust the TDP here, so we can just go right down to 17 watts with no extra boost. We can also go up to 25 watts with no extra boost on that TDP. But it did take me a second to get everything working over on the new Core Ultra laptop. Now, ASUS does have their My ASUS suite built in, and we've got a few great performance profiles here, but it's not 17 watt and it's not 25 locked. What I had to use was an old school method known as throttle stop. So I've used this for years, absolutely love it on these Intel chips, and it does work with this Core Ultra chip. So getting right down to it, when we compare these two CPUs, it definitely looks like the Z1 does have an advantage. Over there, we've got eight cores, 16 threads, with a boost up to 5.1. On the new Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, eight cores, eight threads. They have taken a lot of those cores and threads out from the previous generation, and we've only got a maximum boost up to 4.8. The GPU on the Z1 Extreme is basically the same thing as the 780M, but they don't call it that in that APU. It's a Radeon RDNA 3 based iGPU with 12 compute units, and it'll boost up to 2700 megahertz. On the Core Ultra, we've got the new Intel Arc 140V iGPU, and this has 8 XE2 cores up to 1950 megahertz. But we do have much faster RAM over on the Core Ultra, and it's actually on package RAM, so it's non-upgradable. It's actually on the chip itself. And with the system I'm testing here, I only have access to something with 32 gigs, and it's running at 8533 megahertz, as opposed to the 7500 megahertz over on the Z1 Extreme. Now, with the test we're going to be running, we're not going to max out the RAM here. The RAM amount here really isn't going to matter. It's more about the speed itself. The first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And keep in mind, we're going to be running two tests on each of these, 17 watt and 25 watt. With Geekbench 6, the Z1 Extreme scored a 2,398 single core. The new Core Ultra 7, 2,752. And if we take a look at that multi-core... The Z1 Extreme is coming ahead, but remember, it's got 8 cores and 16 threads. With the Core Ultra, we're only working with 8 cores and 8 threads. Now taking the TDP up to 25 watts on both of these chips, 
Single core on the Z1 Extreme jumped up to 2,482, and single core on that Core Ultra basically stayed the same. I mean, we got a little bit of a boost there, 2,763. But now, since we're pushing more power to this Core Ultra, it can keep the clocks up on all of those eight cores. It actually brought that multi-core up past the Z1 Extreme at a 25 watt TDP. Not by much, and I'm sure if we went up to 30, 35 watts with this, that Z1 would probably beat this chip out just because it's got those extra threads. But so far, not looking bad here for the Core Ultra 7. Now we need to take a look at some GPU benchmarks, and for this, I just ran 3 d Marks Time Spy, 17 watt TDP, Ryzen Z1 Extreme, total score here, 2,705. On the Core Ultra 7, 3,209. Now in the past, with the first gen Core Ultra, we noticed that with the synthetic benchmarks, it did bench out higher than the Z1 Extreme, but when it came to real world performance, it didn't perform as well. I mean, it was way under what that Radeon i GPU can do. But I also tested this at a 25 watt TDP, and now the Z1 Extreme is up to 3,221, but the Core Ultra broke 4,000 here with this benchmark, and seeing over 4,000 on an iGPU at times by is actually really impressive. I'm sure in the future we're going to see much higher scores here, but 4,163? Not too bad. So again, these are synthetic benchmarks, now it's time to see how this thing performs with real gaming. First one we have here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and all of this footage is at 25 watts. I did also run this at a 17 watt TDP, so we'll take a look at what both of these did at those wattages. Straight off the bat, definitely looks like they're trading blows here. We're at 1080p medium, and at the end of this benchmark, the Z1 Extreme at a 25 watt TDP had an average of 49. The Core Ultra 7 actually had an average of 66. This is a pretty big jump here. It's looking pretty decent so far, but I've got more games to test. And remember, I did also test this at a 17 watt TDP. The Z1 Extreme got an average of 43 FPS, and the Core Ultra, 53 at 17 watts. Next game on the list is Forza Horizon 5. This is one I always love to test on these iGPUs because it's very well optimized. But going into this, it was very evident that that Z1 Extreme was coming way ahead. Now we could definitely even this out, get better performance on both sides by adding some FSR or XESS, whatever you like to use here. But at the end of this benchmark, the Z1 Extreme had an average of 72 FPS and the Core Ultra an average of 55. I mean, this is a major jump here. This is going from, you know, playable over 60 to under 60. 25 watt TDP, 1080p, medium settings. And at a 17 watt TDP with those same settings here, that Z1 Extreme still came ahead with an average of 59 FPS versus the Core Ultra's 39 FPS. So that RDNA 3 iGPU is really kicking it up here with Forza Horizon 5. Then I moved over to Cyberpunk 2077 and results here for that Core Ultra were pretty impressive when you consider that the first gen Core Ultra really didn't do a great job with this. 1080p medium, 25 watt TDP. On the Z1 Extreme, we had an average of 51. On the Core Ultra, an average of 54. And even taking it down to that 17 watt TDP, the Core Ultra still beat out the Z1, coming in with a 42 FPS average versus the Ryzen Z1's 40 FPS average. So it's not by much, but yeah, it is coming ahead in Cyberpunk right now. In the final game I tested, we just did a 25 watt TDP test because this is definitely a harder one. Black Myth Wukong. And at the end here, Z1 took the crown with an average of 37 FPS versus that Core Ultra's 34 FPS. So right now, that Core Ultra 7 258V is trading blows with the Z1 Extreme. Personally, I'm really excited to see what this new ARC 140V can do in the future with some more driver optimizations. And I know we said that with the original Core Ultra, but we did get major boosts in performance on the MSI Claw. So I'm not sure if we're going to see something similar once we get some handhelds powered by these new Core Ultra chips or not. But either way, I mean, it's working out much better than I thought it would compared to the first gen Core Ultra. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Keep an eye on the channel because I'll have at least one more video coming up with the Core Ultra. I want to test out a bunch of different Steam games on this at higher wattages just to see exactly what this thing can do. And if there's any specific games you want to see running, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.